Alright guys, so today we're going to talk about halter training your market goats. This can be your um, doe kids or your market weathers, it doesn't really matter. What I like to start with is halter training. Now, most of these goats obviously are going to end up walking on a collar. Some of you guys have a collar halter, halter combo that you use for showing at your shows. Depends on where you are and what judges prefer. Um, I'll just say up front that Personally, I believe that the collars give the goat a better structural appearance and they have a better walk if you can teach them to walk on a collar, which does take extra time. So a lot of people just resort to the halter, which gives them a little bit different of a walk. And so the structure isn't quite as good as it would be with a collar, but it's up to you and the shows that you go to whether you would rather prefer to have that halter collar combo or um, use a collar, but never just use a halter for showmanship because what happens when you go to drive that goat is you don't have the leverage and control that you need. So you need to either have a collar specifically made with the halter attached or you need to use a um, just a collar to show your goats. So I'm going to show you in another video how to teach your goat to walk and then how to switch that out with the collar and teach them to walk. But I always prefer that you start with a halter. That just gets them used to the idea that when they're tied up, they're constrained and they can't go crazy or um, escape. So they just kind of learn some patience. They learn how to sit on the fence and be contained. So I'm going to show you some videos of what we do with that. All right, guys. So here's a real live example. Um, this little doe kid, she's just tied to the fence here, as you can see. Um, this is what we're doing at the beginning. We're just tying them to the fence like this. We're just letting her learn that the halter stops her. She can't go anywhere. She is tied up. And you'll notice she just really doesn't understand that yet. So we're just waiting and giving her a chance to figure that out. And I'll go into some detail on how we do this and what we're really focusing on as we do this to make it um, really specifically and the most benefit to this goat as we train them. Okay, um, what are some important things when we tie them up? Um, you want to always put the halter on correctly. That's very important. The part that you hold, the handle, needs to come out underneath the chin of the goat. And then there's usually a thicker part that goes over the chin. Then the rest, after it goes under the chin, goes back behind underneath the ears. Okay, it needs to be under the ears so that it doesn't pop up over the top of their head and slip off. Okay, so that's how you put the halter on. All right, so this baby is actually really small, but you can see the halter still, um, how it goes on anyways, under the chin there. And then it wraps around underneath the ears, behind the head. Um, you can see it there. And then it comes back around the face and hooks to the other side of the halter. And then there's the chin piece that goes over the top of their nose, okay? So the part that's coming out and look, hooking to the fence is underneath their chin. That's the most important part. Otherwise, the halter could slip back into their eye or um, slip off their nose. So make sure you've got that on right. And then when you tie the goat to the fence, a good idea is in some of these videos, you're going to see I actually used a panel for them. Um, no matter what, you, you're going to be with that goat, so it's not as big of a deal. But having something that they can't get their feet caught in and um, uh, stuck on is a really good idea. Um, but a panel is okay. Um, if that's what you have, okay? You just have to be right there with that goat, making sure that if they're flipping out, that you're there to just make sure they're safe no matter what, which you need to be doing anyways. Even if they're tied on a ring to a wood wall, um, you need to make sure that they're not hurting themselves by freaking out, okay? And that's the goal of halter training. We're going to tie them to the fence with enough room on that halter so that they can fall down and we can help them back up so they can jump if they need to and we can make sure that they get the halter loose again after a minute. So they're just learning, okay, I'm fighting the halter and I'm figuring out that I can't win, right? So you want that goat to learn to just give in to the halter and stand and be calm, right? So this is the goal for today and that's what you're going to train on them. All right, let's start with looking at the height of the halter. Um, I like it about the height of the shoulder or the head. So you can see there it's about the same height as the head, uh, shoulder. And so that means it's a good safe height off the ground. It's not too high, it's not too low. Now the distance, right here you'll see that she's tied way too close to the fence. Well, she's not tied yet, but she's tied. that would be too close to the fence. And if I loosen it up to here, now this is way too far. She could also get her feet caught in the fence. She could leap, she could get hurt. So a good like medium right about here 
is what you want so they can fall down you can pick them up and they'll still be fine i'm going to show you guys how to tie a slip knot halter so that if those goats are freaking out and jumping all over the place you can tie that halter onto the fence in a good slip knot where you can quickly pull and it'll release and the goat will be free um, in case of you need to untie them quickly this is the knot i always recommend all right, so this is the quick release knot. I think I said it was a slip knot. It's a quick release knot. You're gonna wrap it around the place you're gonna tie the animal up. Okay, the part of the halter in my left hand there is the uh, part of the halter that's hooked to the lamb's face, right? And then the rest of the halter we're wrapping around the fence. You're gonna make a circle around, and then you're gonna create a loop with your left hand there and stick that loop through the other circle, okay? So we're going around the fence. We're making a circle, as you can see, right? And then we're gonna go through that circle with a loop, all right? And we're gonna pull that loop tight. And then you can continue to put loops through this circle in my right hand. You can reach through and grab and pull another little loop through, okay? And then you can pull a loop through that loop. This just keeps it so that the lamb steps on this, this quick release knot doesn't completely untie them. And I'll show you how that works as well so we're just gonna leave it like that and then when you grab the tail end of the halter that's when it will release okay just like that just one pull will release the entire halter okay and you can watch the full thing one more time what we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap it back around making a loop putting a loop through that and continuing to make it more secure just by looping it through. These extra loops you don't have to do, but it gets the rest of the halter off the ground um, as a safety measure. One thing you can do there is you can also take the tail end and put that through the uh, last loop. I'm sorry, here. We'll stick it through that last loop right there, and then that's kind of a safety feature. And then you just have to make sure you remember to take it out of that loop before you pull it to release the halter or it won't work, right? And then after that, you're gonna learn and you're gonna begin touching them and getting them used to you being there with them while they're tied. So they're learning not only to not fight the halter, but not to fight you, let you touch them, let you handle them, let you get your hands on them, pick up their legs maybe, um, and just, just touching them. So they're getting used to a person being there and a person being with them. All right, so this is pretty simple. You're just trying to get the goat used to you. So you're just putting your hands on them. You're just picking up their legs. You're just seeing if there's anywhere that they really don't like um, being handled and trying to just get them used to that. Um, if you notice them kicking when you touch a certain leg, you can touch that leg more. She doesn't like her face touched as much, so touching her face a lot helps. You know, just kind of learning the goat that you have teaching them to let you set their legs because you're going to need to do that in the show ring. Doe kids, you're going to need to set all four legs. Uh, sometimes the weathers, you only need to set those back legs if you can get those front legs done. But really, you just need to learn and get them used to completely letting you touch them so that they're all ready and comfortable being around you. Hey guys, I just wanted to hop in and say thank you for watching my videos. Um, if you want to see more videos like this one, check out my page and um, subscribe so you can see them all. We've got lots of videos on all the animals, as well as books. I wrote actual showmanship books on how to train and master showmanship, uh, to train those animals and then master showmanship to really get in there, impress those county fair judges. Or we have some great tips in the books as well to impress judges at a higher level and figure out how to make it to that next step and begin the process of becoming an advanced showman throughout the state and national level as well. So if you want to check out those books, they're called Show Your Way to the Top. We have sheep, goat, swine, and beef. And all three of those books are just packed full of information. I've done interviews with other people. I have experience myself and um, all sorts of stuff that'll help you out. Lots of advice from lots of people and um, great tips in those books. So if you're interested, check those out.